Okay, so me and the young lady start dating uh, as we pick back up where we left off last week. And um, of course, I've got to keep it a secret because like I told you guys in the last episode, mama don't play that. My mother, Kefi Battles, she don't play. And uh, at 14, I already knew she wasn't going to be open and receptive to me having this young lady in my life, especially considering that this young lady is an upperclassman. I was in the seventh grade, and the young lady of my interest at the time was in the 10th grade. So that means if I'm 14 or 15, this girl was at least 16 or 17 years old, more mature than I was. And, um, I, you know, I, 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 it didn't bother me, of course. Um, there's always this desire, this thrill in a younger man to be involved with a younger lady. And I mean, you know, as a young person, the thrill or the desire is not always carnal or, or should I say, sinful. It's not like, uh, you know, I knew anything about sex, really. I had not had sex up to this point. But I knew that the maturity that she expressed was attractive to me, the way she looked at me, the way she talked to me. And I was all in. I remember there's a courtesy grocery store on the corner of Carmichael Road where my grandparents live in the Bahamas in Bel Air States. And uh, I would go into this store during this time and I would buy little barrettes, hair clips, bows, uh, all the little things that girls put in their hair. And I would buy packs of these and I would bring them to the young lady that I was dating. Um, and then by this time, I was writing letters addressed to her. I was, I've always been a writer. I've always been somebody that likes to express himself through words, whether it's spoken words or written words. And I remember sharing with this young lady uh, my desire for her in written form. And she would eat it up. I mean, I remember she loved my expression of how I felt concerning her. But of course, I'm still young, I'm still inexperienced, and I don't really know the first thing about relationships. I'm just going off of infatuation. Because at 14, I mean, come on, what could I offer you in the way of a happy home? What could I offer you in any uh, 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 experience of stability, etc.? And hey, I mean, when we're young, when we're looking for someone to spend our time with, we may not be really thinking about all of that. We're right, that, right then in that moment, and that's about all we know, that we feel a certain way about that person at that time, and hey, we don't want it to end. In fact, we see no end to it. And as time went on, I remember one particular day, in the Bahamas, they have these things on campus called Fun Day, where it's a, a day that is um, designated just for activity. There's no schoolwork. Um, there's no regular school courses taking place on fun day. On fun day, you come dressed in your street clothes because in the Bahamas, we wore uniforms to school. We didn't get to wear our fly gear, our Nikes and all that kind of stuff to school like most kids in the U.S. do or like I did later on when I came back to the U.S. We had to wear a uniform, but on fun day, we could wear whatever we wanted. And I remember this particular year on fun day, uh, we came on campus. I was dressed in my jeans, my Nikes, and the young lady of my interest at the time, she was dressed in a gorgeous gown herself. And they had one particular classroom designated as like a theater. And at the time, the movie Dumb and Dumber with Jim Carrey was the new thing that had just come out not very long before. And uh, so we watched Jim Carrey's Dumb and Dumber together. And uh, oh man, you talk about butterflies and falling in love. I remember putting my arm around her waist and just leaning into her. By this time, we hadn't kissed yet, but I was truly, truly falling in infatuation. Notice I didn't say love. I mean, of course, looking back at it at the time, you couldn't tell me I wasn't in love, but I'm older and wiser now, and I understand what it was at the time that I was really feeling. Anyway, we got um, into the movie. We got into the film. We're sitting there watching it, I remember walking around campus that day feeling like I was on a cloud. Um, and that's really how it is when you're young. You feel like you can conquer it all. And in fact, you feel as if all things are possible in that moment because, hey, one thing is going right in your life and that one thing is your relationship. Well, that day came and it ended. I remember we left uh, school that particular day. And after we left school, 
my mom found one of the letters that I wrote to this young lady. And like I told you, mama don't play. My mother was not a person that played around with anything like that. I mean, at 14, she was not having it. And she was like, yo, you in love, excuse me? I remember I would write the letters and I would leave them in my drawer in my bedroom in the house that we lived in, which was, of course, my grandparents' home. And uh, in my grandparents' home, where we lived, I would have little areas in my room that I'd hide stuff. Somehow, somehow, mamas always got that uh, intuition. They always know what's going on and when to strike, right? Because my mother, she immediately knew that something was up and that, um, mm, this boy is on a cloud right now. I mean, look at how he's walking. There's a pep in his step. He's acting a little funny. I better go uh, uh, shake down his room. I better go flip his room like they do in prisons, right? And so she goes into my bedroom and sure enough, she flips it. She's looking all over the place, under the mattress, in the drawers, in the closet. She's looking in the pockets of my clothing, the pockets of my pants and shirts. I mean, she ain't leaving not one rock unturned. And lo and behold, as she's in there looking, she finds, first of all, my uh, Outkast album. If you are into the hip hop genre, at least in that day, you remember that the Outkast album always had an image of a naked woman on the front of it, at least just her torso and up. So her chest was showing and she'd be in a fetal position or she'd be sitting in a position which of course it was an image. It wasn't a real live person. It was just a artist impression of a woman. And she found that album. And of course that got tossed out. And then she found uh, my uh, letters that I was writing to my girlfriend at the time. And when she found those letters, it was O-V-E-R, over. It was finished. It is finished, yeah. Like Christ uh, cried out on the cross, it is finished. Well, it was finished. When my mama found that letter, it was over. I remember she called my aunt, uh, who was the teacher on campus, who, of course, because she was the teacher, she knew about what was going on. Her ear was to the ground. She could, you know, figure out things quickly, even if she wasn't perhaps involved in it. Hey, she was a teacher on campus, so she could get information quick. And my mother called her and she's like, hey, Marlene, my aunt's name, who is this so-and-so and so-and-so Andre's writing letters to? And my aunt immediately responded, oh, she's one of the young ladies in my classroom. I mean, she is an upperclassman. She gave my mama all the tea. That's honey. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Because I knew what was the deal at that point. And sure enough, as she, uh, gives my mom all the information on my girlfriend at the time. My mama says, hey, do you know how to get in touch with this young lady? And I'm shocked, I'm like, oh no, I know you ain't about to call this girl. I know you ain't about to call her. Sure enough, mama calls her. I'm just like, whoa. I mean, my little heart was crushed. You know, you ever see those films where somebody's madly in love and, and then, you know, you see the, the, the situation where they're crushed their heart is broken. Well, this was my experience in in, 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 in these type of things for the first time. And uh, they sure enough called her. I can't remember if she answered the phone. I think she did, um, because she has an older sister and a younger brother. And of course she lived in the house with her parents, but I think the young lady answered the phone if I can remember. And I remember this was 1998. So I can't remember exactly all the details, but she answered the phone. She said, hello, and my aunt addressed her first. And then my mama rushed in like superwoman. Um, excuse me, but um, my son got these letters in her, his bedroom addressed to you, young lady. And I don't mean no harm to you. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but uh, Andre ain't ready for all that. And I remember, <laughs> oh, I remember going to school that next day. And I remember going to my aunt's classroom which was my homeroom class at that particular time. And her, the young lady I was uh, in love with, walks past the window on the backside of the, of, of the classroom, her and a cousin of hers, and she looked up into the window right at me, right as she's walking past the classroom. And she looked at me and she cut her eyes and she kept on going. And she did not speak to me for a long time after that. I mean, I was crushed, okay? I was crushed. 